Good morning. It's been a few. Uh, been a little busy in the off season here. Bathroom redos, laundry room redos, paint in the house, furniture, just, you know, but all the inside stuff so I could spend time outside this year. A uh, couple of new things happening. A uh, little guy over here we're going to talk about in a minute, and that's what we're here for today. Uh, I got a swing set. But I've got to clear a big spot in the backyard for that and for the trampoline to make a whole little play park set up for the kids. So the backyard is a little bit of a backseat this year. Um, we'll keep it clean. We'll keep it tidy. But I'm not going to be going at it like I will with the front. But can't get to that until I take care of this. So, yeah. See that right there? Thought it was hopefully just going to be the head gasket as a problem. But as I was in like... Look at that nice little black nasty oil that's sitting in the pan there that's kind of leaked out. So last fall, right as I was finishing up, I did last cleanup with this thing. I was bringing it into the garage, going to do an oil change on it, get everything, all the fluids fixed up on it, get it washed, get it clean, put it back in the shed. I made it about here up my yard and it stuttered and it died, just completely died. Uh, I took off the head. I was hoping, okay, it's a head gasket thing maybe, but... Then the, the wheel stops spinning and it's basically, I, what I found out from doing some, some checkups on here is basically the internals are shot. The, can't, the crank on it, it's all just kind of blown apart. Seized up, if you will. So now I've got a little bit of work here to do. And so what I ended up doing is said, okay, well, the motor's shot. Do I now want to spend the money and get a brand new mower? like a Toro time cutter, like a 42 inch um, with, the better, with the better motor in it. You know, it's $2,600, $2,700. Um, I definitely wanted to stick with something I could do tow behind because I have a lot of tow behind equipment. I've got my, my Thatcher, I've got my plug aerators. I got all those fun little toys that I, that I like to tow with. And I'm hopefully gonna be getting a, a lawn sweeper uh, this season. I was gonna add to the collection and maybe a sprayer, we'll see. But that aside or do i go on facebook on a tag sale and try to find something for you know five six hundred bucks just to kind of get me through a couple more seasons um thankfully i have a a friend who was able to give me a some good advice and a good deal and so now what i have in here haha brand new Exact motor, it's 500 cc, 17 and a half horsepower, single cylinder. It's literally the same motor. So it's gonna be a lot easier for me to just drop the shaft, the drive spindle, unbolt that piece of garbage, put the new one on, call it a day. I do have to keep an eye out. Obviously these things do have head gasket problems. So that John Deere model um, is known to blow head gaskets. And I'll get my finger out of the way here as I let me get a little handle for this. So these are known to have head gasket issues, so I do have to little, keep a little bit more of an eye on that and be a little more aware. Um, so if I do start to see a smoking or an oil consumption issue, um, kind of get on it. The kits are only like 15 bucks. They're not that expensive to buy. Um, so I might actually get one just to have it on hand because this was 250 hours. I did 247 before this guy uh, took a dive. Um, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it, but the goal here is to get this off, put a new motor in, get this thing running today, and I'm gonna walk you through that. I think I've spent enough time talking, so we're gonna stop and then just start jumping into some work. So stay tuned. One thing to note as I'm walking around and I'm checking my connection points here, it truly is a complete motor. So it, it's got the starter on it, it's got all the harnesses ready to go, it even comes with the spark plug, which is awesome. Um, it's got the diaphragm for your fuel pump, I mean, everything is ready to go in this. I guarantee you there's probably an air filter in here, but I'll double check. So super awesome that I'm just gonna be able to bolt this and put it back on. Again, for the money, I think it's gonna be well worth it. Uh, just noting my vacuum line connections here. So we've got our different connection points where everything connects into the diaphragm, the fuel filter, which I have another one of these, so I can throw that on. And yeah, it's disgusting in here, but that's what happens when you're dealing with blown motors and then again where the connection is down here i took a couple pictures of where the throttle cable is attached so just taking a couple points to uh to note and take a look at and moving on draining the oil if you have a little pan i know this guy could be a little temperamental because he sits right on the edge of the rail here but what i found is so it's not just dropping all the way is if you turn the wheel a little bit to the left and you have your deck drop down pan just sits right in there nice and even 
You don't have to worry about it. And then this you just wipe up when you need it. So let's make sure we got one handed, of course. There we go. See, I didn't think there'd be that much in there. I'm gonna take the cap off. There we go. See, still a little bit left in there. Not a big deal. And we'll clean that up next. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect everything. There you go. I don't know. Uh, it's blacker than you think. I mean, it is dirty, but again, I was trying to do the oil change in the fall um, as the second of the season before I uh, put it away. So I just let it sit here, obviously. But um, I don't know, maybe a half quarter so of oil was in there. Not much, but uh, hey, every little bit helps. Oil's drained, so now I've got a T25, little Torx. It's gonna go right here next to the throttle cable. That comes completely off. And then right in here, you can see the cable. And you take this cable and it pops right out. And I'll do that with two hands. All right, next up is I disconnected the fuel line. Again, I don't have any fuel really in here, so there's nothing pouring out worries there i also disconnected the vacuum hose that clips onto the back of this guy the complete engine already comes with this piece here tied on so i don't have to worry about that because that was part of this diaphragm so literally it's the back pipe here on the intake fuel line hose over here and then a t25 right there to unscrew the throttle cable right here and i'll show you this throttle cable it's kind of dirty it went right into this little hole here and you just pull it out pop it everything comes on the new one plastic slide and all so this guy comes to the side there you go you're almost done with this side of the motor they really do make this pretty idiot proof um one harness right there it's a six pin but there's only uh, in mine uh, four pins so that's it this is already tied into the motor so we don't have to worry about that like i said it comes with a starter and everything else so there is not a whole lot else to do here. We're pretty well disconnected on the top end. Next, we're gonna go down here. Let me get my light. And we're gonna take care of pulling the pulley off. So that drive shaft pulley, you can see there's one big bolt there. We're gonna go ahead and hit that guy. Crankshaft pulley. Now, right underneath, there's the bolt. I'm gonna do a 16 millimeter with a half inch drive. So I have some extra a little extra oomph to pop that off because it might take a little bit. Uh, pulled off the belt, dropped the deck, and I removed the pin right here. Hung it out of the way. Plenty of room. I did a little jack up right here just to get some space under there. And this is more than enough room to fall right out now. So one thing I do want to note is because when you spin this, this will spin. So you've got to get this to stop so that you can get to the pulley to come off. So I took a little wrench. And I got it caught right here on this part of the flywheel, right above the teeth, right into the fins on the engine. So you see that little gap right there, I have it locked into place. I just kind of held my thumb there and I was able to break that free. And now I'm just pulling down that bolt and then we'll drop the uh, pulley. There you go. One pulley out. Forgot to note, there was the, also the, uh, the top drive pulley here. So obviously the lower one was for the deck and any attachments, blowers, whatever. This is for the actual drive. And so, like I said, I didn't go and pull that off. I let it kind of fall down. It kind of held it there and it was able to pop it right off. So when we put it back on, you just want to make sure as you're going through that this gets put on because it'll be a lot easier to do when it's reinstalled. I'm going to go ahead and just clean that up a little bit. It's not bad. It looks in good shape. I'm just going to wipe it down since I don't really get a chance to look at it from this side. And now we're gonna start unbolting the motor. So let's see what we got. Next, up next is gonna be our engine. And so the bolts, if you look here, they mount from the bottom up, not from the top down. So they're underneath the frame to pull them down. And those are on a 15. So I got a long 15 here, but I'm probably gonna throw an extension on it just so I'm not jacking my hands up in there. So let me grab one of my extension pieces and I might be cheating a little bit because I don't want to reach up and look. There we go. 
that'll work. That'll get me some extra reach. So let's just start pulling out engine bolts and see what we get. Got one bolt out, three more to go. I'm about to take that little guy out back in there. This extension is perfect. Uh, I don't know, that's maybe a six inch extension I'm using. Um, and then you just, once you break them, they break off and you're good to go. But it does, can take a little bit of force. I'm gonna do this with two hands. I don't feel like breaking anything today, so. But that's it. I'm gonna work my way around and finish the last three. Voila. One nasty old broken engine. A little bit of cleanup work to do. Obviously, the battery box area, I got to clean that up too. That guy's sitting over there. But it's clean. It's out. It's very, very simple. This is by no means rocket science. I mean, I'd honestly, it's not really time consuming. But one thing I did forget to say is this guy right here was the ground cable that was uh, tied off on the back of the motor here, right where the six pin is so just make sure you grab that it's an 11 millimeter and you're good to go like i said whenever things like this start freeing up and you think you're ready don't just rip them don't just uh try to grab them and go you know you got to move them around a little bit make sure there's no missing connections or points you didn't hit but i'm gonna get in here and get a nice good clean job going uh, i don't have the hose out but i'm gonna wipe this all down pretty good and then we'll put the new guy in guys we'll go right back to it all right, we're done. Thanks for watching the video. No, 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 I'm just, just kidding. Uh, just dropped it on, I haven't even done it. I literally just finished wiping. You can see I didn't go crazy. So it wasn't a super clean job. It was to get the grease, all the muck and oil seepage off. But, uh, you know, maybe I could have wiped that guy a little better. That's better. Anyway, I'm gonna give this a good cleaning anyway when I'm ready and I got the foaming canning out, cannon outside ready to go. I just wanted the area around the motor clean. So we're gonna go ahead, first things first, let's bolt it up before we start making connections. Key point to note for anybody else, these are smooth. So you see, as you thread this bolt in, it will make the thread pattern. It will lock itself into the motor. That's why it's gonna sit nice and tight. So what I'm actually doing is I started this one just a little bit I'm gonna go around and do that to all of them. So that way I'm not over tightening one and then having to shift the motor around. I can get everybody in where it needs to be and then just work my way around and tighten, okay? I started with this guy up here. You can see where I am in the motor. That was the easiest to line up by sight. It's in. I'm gonna come back here now and then I'm gonna go around and do the other side. That one over there will be the last one because that one back there is the hardest to line up a sight with. So once I get all these other three, that one should go right in, all right? All right, I wanted to note this. So I'm um, under the tractor here. And you can see the spindle hanging down. Let me see if I can set the light aside without it dropping. Right here, that's the guide notch. So when you put this spindle back in and you finagle it in, you'll see there it is, right there, there's the notch, okay? So it's got that notch in there. You gotta make sure that lines up and you'll feel it. So as you put this on a little bit, just to get the belt over the top. So slide the belt on and then you work this on to the shaft. And then when you get it up there and you feel it stop, you can just kind of rotate this around and lift it up at the same time and you'll feel it start to slide on up. And then you know you're in. And then we can start doing the bolt. All right, hang on. So to make sure this was tight, obviously you get to a point tightening down there that it starts spinning everything. It starts spinning the whole crank. So I had to pop the cover off. Cover has Four bolts, two on the front, and two right there in the back, one here and one there. These are 10 millimeter and you can see some of them are longer than the others. So the long ones come from the back, the short ones from the front. And the other thing to note is once you get over to this side, pop off the air cover, take out the filter, and right back in here is a little flathead screw that you wanna make sure you grab. So, and that's all sitting here now. So you get the little flathead screw, cover, filter, bolts. So that's all tightened up. So I'm gonna put the cover back on and I'm gonna start reconnecting and then I gotta do the muffler. So one thing I didn't note was the muffler is still on the old motor. Or actually it wasn't because I took it off, so stupid me. But here you go. 
So this guy right here, it's gonna fit down here and be bolted right on. So we're gonna take care of that, but I wanted to note that the muffler pipe, if you still have it on the old motor, does need to come off. I already had it off because I was doing work on the head. So excuse me on that one, but at this point you probably still haven't thrown out your old motor. So just take that note. And again, I did come down here and use the little wrench again. I caught it right here on the flywheel. So there's that. And you can see it kind of hooked right into here nicely. And I just kind of held it on with my fingers so it wouldn't pop off and knock me in the face. Got it nice and tight. Everything's cranked down, cover back on. Let's work through our connections. If you're doing these kinds of things like me, you know better enough than to throw things away until the job is done. So again, the nut that I took off for this, the 11 millimeter for the uh, the cable here, for the starter, I shouldn't, I called it the ground cable before, but this is for the starter. Um, yeah, so this guy here, you need to make sure you save that nut because that's gotta go back on. So we'll put that on. But like I said, you guys are smart. You already know that. And I gotta take a look at here at the drain plug because this is what is in there. So I don't know if that is because of the shipping or if I need to use the other pipe. I got to take a quick look over here because it does look like the hole might be a different size diameter, but I'll check into that. I'll let you know. All right, cheers. Now we're going to connect our clips. Make sure everything lines up. Good, good. Push that together. There we go. Easy enough. Clip is on now. Obviously the battery terminal, I'm waiting for the battery to go on. Now I'm gonna come over to this side. Came with a fuel filter. So now I've just got to hook on the vacuum hose here. So that will go on and I shouldn't have to heat these. Nope, no heat needed, it went right on. Nice and easy. And then I got my fuel line hose here, which I will feed on. And then I'll move the little clamp up. So we'll get that out of the way. And then next we're gonna do the throttle cable. I'll show you where that's gonna go. All right, throttle cable. Don't worry about this guy yet. You're just gonna give yourself a headache trying to connect it. You wanna get the pin in the hole there. And you can see, similar to what they have on like snow throwers and such other cables, it's notched. So you just, and I'm gonna do it one-handed as best I can for you folks. That's better, I'll do it with this hand. But you take the cable, there you go, and you put it straight in, and you push it in. There we go, and then latch it back. And now, you take this little guy, and I'll show you what's going on here. Is he's actually got, if you can see on the side, if I can get the camera over there, there we go. There's actually a hole here, so you can see there, this hole here. There's a notch on one side of this that fits right in there, and the rest of it sits right over the cable. I apologize for all the motion, however. I am doing this one-handed, so bear with me. I'm by no means a pro, and I don't have any type of camera gear. There we go, just like that. And then that T25 is gonna go right back in there. We got that here ready to go. It's actually kind of funny. I'm using the camera to guide myself in instead of looking. There we go. And that will get tightened right up. And you just wanna make sure that wherever your throttle position is at first, see that? So you want to make sure if you're all the way forward, you're all the way forward in the throttle. So we got to make sure that that's set appropriately so that whatever's here matches what's there. You can adjust this obviously when the motor's on, but I'm going to do as close as I can right now just to get it going. Muffler. Thread it in. There we go. Throw the bolts in. Also checked oil, which there is... So we're going to make sure we top this off with the right amount of oil. Throw the battery in. Turn the key. Pray to God. See what happens. Good to go. Quart and a half. Topped off. We are in awesome shape with our oil. Battery's on. I wiped it down, reconnected it. Everything appears to be in order. So we're going to fingers crossed get the keys and see what happens. Choke. Hold on to your butts. There it 
is, guys. Uh, I gotta do just a small adjustment on the throttle cable because this is all the way back down. So I gotta be able to put it a little bit farther down to be in uh, pretty much uh, slow-mo. And we are good. I got a little bit of smoke here. You can see there's just some oil burn off happening on the, uh, on the muffler. Not a big deal. I'll take care of that. But we're in. We're running. I'm excited. You should be too. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I'll throw the list of tools in the beginning of the video in the comments just so you know kind of what I used here. But hey, not a hard thing to do if you buy it right out of the box from John Deere doesn't come with the oil in it so make sure you buy yourself the two quarts of uh, the turf guard um, and what else do we need to say about this honestly if I was doing this as just like a daily for people this is like an hour job it's really that simple I took a little bit more time because I was doing some clips I was videotaping things I was kind of dilly down and around making sure things were wiped up made sure you know things were check through and recheck but you know now that i've done it literally it's probably about an hour job so i would say first time only time you're doing it um just give yourself an hour and a half hour 45 tops it's really not that bad it's pretty plug and play all right hey have a great day guys i'll uh, talk to you more this season as we get going because now we've got a lot of work to do out there